Okay. Nothing I'll say right away is that you should not center yourself on the minimap. Yeah, you want to be able to see the entire map at all times. So the pause right here, for example, okay. like, you can see mids, you can see bump side B, you can see parts of T spawn, but you can't see A side yeah. at all. And you can't see CT spawn at all. Well, you, you only see like half a CT spawn. So you have like three other yeah. teammates, you can't tell where they are. If they see any enemies, you won't be able to tell that. So ideally, you should uh -huh. be able to see the whole minimap all the time. Because that's I'm information. Like, well, okay. There. So we know that the Sage is T-Spawn. Taking a side game ball. It's okay. Down. We spotted two. Chat and Sage. Nobody's B. We go for a fast rotate. Okay, great. Go for a fast flank. Even better. Okay. I like this so far. We really like it. Bad. And be careful this one to your right. Uh, I don't know about what's swinging me is. Tap bomb. Last guy's on bomb. You don't have time. You have to make a play. You don't have time for this. You have to go straight for the bomb. Tap it at least. Very good. Much better. So far so good. So this one I really liked. That uh, let's see, we started pushing. We decided to push to here, which is great because now we get the information that nobody is B, and it seems like we decided to. I'm assuming that you're really just gonna stay in this out of the wall, but suddenly the, your rain makes contacts, so you take this gamble, get the information, get a free orb, and you go for okay, now we can see you cross here. Here we see that Dome is T-spawn, now, now two people get pinged by Sova, lots of action happen, and then you go for a really good flank, and then actually you you vary your, your timing a bit here, actually, because depending on the action, like right now there's a whole bunch of action, when there's a bunch, a bunch of action, life out, run fast, of it, so far so good, then suddenly, oh things are quiet, okay now, now it's action again. Spike planted. So, it seems like you do have the idea that uh, maybe if you're um, not aware, but to explain, like when, when you go for a leg, when you go for a flank, that you have options of speeding up or, sli or slowing down the lurk, depending on if you run for your knife belt, that's the fastest, but also higher risk, right? But if you yeah. slow walk with your gun out, that's the slowest, but it's also the safest. And to ch to choose this this uh, sliding uh, sliding scale between how fast you want to get to get to your destination versus how safely do you want to get to your destination depends on how the round is being played out. If your your team is already on a, in a gunfight or an enemy is like already on site, then it's it's uh, what's the word like uh, generally safer to to take. Like you, it's still sort of a risk, but like, but it's slightly safer because like the enemy would be distracted, they would be in a gunfight, or you you have a better idea of like um, where the enemies are if they're already on site. Then most likely you can just full sprint through T spawn. So you have yeah, all the right ideas here. This is all really good. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, 
And then uh, I pointed out that someone could be to the right here. As you saw, the enemy that, that just planted the bomb. And you kill his omen. As soon as I peek from this again, I, I'd be really careful that someone could peek from this right side like while your molly is out. I also yeah, want molly like this because like your, your wide swing with your utility out, when you pick angles, ideally you want to have your gun out. You don't want to have utility out. And if your goal was to molly maze, you can do so without exposing yourself to maze. If you look to your left here and just bounce it off the top wall, you accomplish the same thing. Where you're, you're mo you build to molly maze, then push your gun, and then you can pick maze. But here, like, you basically yeah. should have just died to this maze. But okay, this maze misses all the shots. You get a free kill on the sage. And then, the only thing too is that whenever you're next to the bomb, you should almost always just tap it. Because tapping the bomb puts huge pressure on the attackers. So that now they don't know if you're yeah. defusing, they don't know if you're gonna stick. They know if it's just gonna gonna be a fake, but it puts pressure on them to make a move. But if if you don't tag bomb, then they're more inclined to just sit back and wait, or sit back and like play angles, play corners, or whatever, until like the threat of a of a bomb tap or bomb defuse happens. Yeah. There goes. They're good. Get a free kill. At this point, you should try to make a play a bit faster, I don't know if you realize. But then we, well, the enemy, really doesn't do anything, she just has, just has to wait and survive. We get a good headshot, and so far so good. Okay, so we're bonusing with a, a ghost, it's okay. Let me ask you. The wall goes down, you hide in this cubby. Then suddenly you decide to get the orb. Why is that? Uh, I got calls from my team that uh, they're pushing A. So. Okay. Okay, makes sense. And then here we decided for a safe rotate, okay. Enemy spotted A. Enemy spotted A. Enemy spotted A. And now you also have second round ults, which is Enemy spotted A. Amazing. Use a stinger. Kill. The wall, just pick the wall ACP. Yeah, you're too worried about this person. Whoops. Whenever the stage wall comes up like this, generally the priority is to break a section wall ACP. Because the longer that this wall stays up, like the more and more value that it's going to get. That it, it zones you out, it isolates you from the rest of the fights, it removes you as a threat, and now everyone on the enemy team only has to look at Raptors, they only have to look at your jet. And right now, there's, there's no reason for anyone to really peek on top of uh, what the fuck? on top of that rope. Yeah, and the longer that you're on this side of the wall, that you can't really help your jet at all. And even if you decide to rotate around to um, to get to your jet, like rotate to your jet, you should still break a section of the wall just to put pressure on the enemy because again like the longer the wall stays up the longer that the, the enemy team does not have to look at screens at all until the the the, the wall is broken so therefore even though okay we're going to rotate to our jet but all the enemy's eyes are going to be on rafters there's there's no attention being baited yeah exactly now the sage is like let me just spam all my utility at rafters because that's the only possible place that you and jet could be that's really risky, you should've just used your stinger. Whoop! <laughs> Tap bomb. Tap bomb. Okay, that, that ran is bad. Okay, so you kinda win that with a uh, gun advantage, but it's okay. 
Anyone have points? First two rounds went pretty well for us. But then things started going really bad. I think you should have uh, bonus with the stinger. Well, at least I would have bonus with the stinger, but okay, we decide to buy in the bonus one. Also, personally, I would probably have bought a Phantom instead of a Vandal because you have your ultimate. <laughs> oh! Okay, well, that's just some bad name there, but we'll, we'll skip that. Hmm, interesting wall in mid. Let me ask you, what do you think about this wall? This wall here. Uh, this is the usual wall I play on mid so that I can. Uh, Go back to cover behind the wall after uh, peeking. Hmm. Okay. What is what does the wall accomplish? Let me ask you that. Uh. Apart from making it harder for them to push, maybe I mean they would hesitate to push right through the wall. They can't see the other side. Hmm. True. But like, if you were the enemy and you you were pushing mid, like. And you, this wall is here, and you decide, oh, I'm just gonna push it to the wall. Then, what's the first angle that they, you, you're gonna look at? Uh, yeah, they would be looking at uh, tubes. Uh, looking at tube? Yeah. Mm, uh, I guess so, yeah, I guess that's a possibility. Yes. Just that most people who play mid are, are gonna be playing on, on boiler, like where you're standing, right? And as an enemy, if I was an enemy, like this is gonna be the first angle I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check this angle. Okay. So I, I would say that if you're gonna play this, put this wall down, that you play some other more random angle. Like maybe you play underneath two, or you'll play okay. at the bottom of two, for example. Those are much more um, more of an off angle compared to like this angle is this, this by far more, way more common. Right. Yeah. That's right. So, okay, so we decided to do this wall, we decided to hold it like such. And then even as you're spamming these bullets, you're telling exactly, telling the enemy exactly where you are. I'll probably say that if you have an opportunity, I will go to the right instead of just playing from snowman because eventually your your jet's gonna arrive here, right? And she's gonna want to play this angle. Meanwhile, you have the opportunity to play another but improved angle, right? By by your snowman to your yeah. right. Yeah. So whenever you have the chance or opportunity, try to take multiple angles. Well, set your team up for multiple angles instead of stacking up the same angle. Like here you're playing a single. I think this was also I think a bad idea. Mm, why is that? He ended up getting tapped. Both of both uh, me and the jet uh ended up getting tapped, right? Both of you and your jet end up one? Yeah, they ended up one tapping us uh right. the enemy race. Well, that's primarily because that that raise when she peeks, she only has to worry about one angle. She only has to worry about where you and the jet are standing, because you're both basically standing on top of each other. But if you, for yeah. example, like this one, I'm trying to point out, if you stood on the right side, the right angle, then now the jet has to worry about a potential wide swing when she's fighting the jet, for example. Okay. So rule of thumb, in general, try to take as many angles as possible if you're given the opportunity. Second thing too is that you have your ults, so that you should probably look for opportunity to ult. So at this point here, you realize that it's going to be a, a, a B execute from the enemy. There's already an omen smoke, plus a rain of flash, plus uh, I think a raise that peeks out eventually. And 
you have this brief opportunity while the smoke is active to get close to just like get inside of sight and then alt and then it makes, makes it extremely difficult for the enemy to plant the bomb and or like uh, defend the bomb okay so this would be like basically like a golden opportunity to like use your ult and potentially clutch the round off of that Planted. Last player stands. Oh, you buy a uh, Okay, you buy a specter. You also don't have any armor. No shields. Protect our homeland. Oh, okay. We, uh, we, we saw the specter. We saw the specter with powerful shields. Yeah. Well, what's what are you thinking? Uh, not sure actually. Now that I look back, uh, maybe I thought I think I was planning to play on alt. Okay, maybe that's why I took the shield. In that case, if if you're planning to to alt, then you should at least buy a shorty, because like a shorty is like the go-to weapon when you have your your ultimate active. Okay. Okay, so here's my thought process is that when I see my, my team is basically forcing, right? My team is buying and they have like almost no money left over. They have like 100 credits, 50 credits, whatever. That means that this is like a full or forced buy. And whenever that happens, generally speaking, you should also full or forced buy. Or have some sort of plan to, to play around that at least. So if you're not going to full buy with like a Spectre with heavy shields, then like say you plan to use your ults then you should buy a shorty with your ult. And if you buy a shorty, what you also do is that you you buy the shorty, you drop it on the ground so that you still have your classic out. Then when the round starts, you drop your, your classic and pick up the shorty. So that way you have both a shorty and a classic if, if you need to. Right. Yeah. Then, then you choose the, the worst option of all of them, which is you buy full shields with just a classic. So normally, if you're... If you're just gonna full save, like then you should just not buy the shields. The the shields is to protect your investment. But now you're not investing anything. You just you just have just a classic. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I I I I bought the shield so that I could stay alive. Uh, I'm playing in the alt. Okay. So right away, I will look for an opportunity to get that gun, or one of those two guns. We can also take a risk, I like this. Looking is always good. Especially if we just have a classic, so we're not really gambling much. I think I heard one too, or was that your sofa? No, I guess not. Last player standing. At this point, we just play exit kills. I wouldn't even stand here because, like, uh, you know, the sage ball is up, and you know that one person, the the omen with the the vandal, is is pushed out of rafters right now. So, two things. One is that we're thinking. I'm assuming you're thinking is that oh, I'm gonna stand here and wait for someone to push screens, but that that's extremely unlikely because they just walled off screens. What's more likely to happen is that the omen is going to continue pushing to CT spawn, and then you're going to get to a gunfight, Vanna versus suspected, which you're going to lose. The other thing too is that they would expect you to come from, from somewhere from CT spawn or from mid. So the more unsuspecting thing to do, the less predictable thing to do, would be to like wait outside of T spawn or something, or wait on like on top of belt and try to get like one or two exit kills with your specter. Where you can force a close range engagement. Okay. Spike planted. So here one rafters. Oh, he happens to push the screens. I would just force this fight. Okay, good try. <laughs> so now I'm assuming your team is fully broke. And now we actually. Oh, we have just a marshal. Yeah, 
So, what do you think about this wall? I just put that to cover myself from uh, uh, from some mantles. I land on top of that box. On top of uh, which box? The one I just uh, stood there. Uh, my marshal. Okay. So one thing I'm thinking about this wall is that it allows the enemy to actually like uh, avoid the left side of a site and just isolate and work their way toward maze. So just FYI, as long as you're aware of that. Oh, that's... I also want to put the wall up too early. Because you're actually isolating, isolating your, you and yourself off, well, you're your team off. So, for example, if you were the enemy and you're you're pushing through belts and you see this wall is in front of you, that means that that wall, that no one, no one on your team can be standing like next to the wall. They all have to be either like where you're standing or in rafters or or far far back in back sites, right? So you're yeah. actually isolating the angles. Okay, you're actually helping the team out, enemy team out when they decide to peek or push from belt. Instead, you want to when when they peek from belt or when they peek from somewhere, you want them to be exposed to as many angles as possible. Okay. And it makes sense that okay, we're, we're putting the wall because we're worried about something someone coming from the right side of. Uh, like the A entrance, like where the stage is, we're just standing. But the wall is just too early because the there's no way that an enemy can 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 even peek this angle yet. Yeah. True. So people usually peek from belt first because it's it's faster to to get to compared to the other angle. So I would wait probably like at least like ten seconds or something like that before you put this wall up. Okay. Reloading. Enemy spotted. Reloading. Enemy spotted. Spike down A. Reloading. 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 Beds. It was equal round, so not a big deal. Anyone have funds? I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get no one's gonna peek from belts. Belt is cleared. Realize this fight. So, back to here. We're peeking belts, we're peeking belts. But what's actually happening? The ra the Raynor is pushing up. Now the Raynor has killed the jet. And now at this okay. point, no one is jump no no one is belt. Or it's extremely unlikely that anyone is belt. And now belt is fully cleared. Yeah. I think I didn't notice at that point. Probably like as soon as you see that the, the jet dies, like yeah, the jet dies, and you see the, yeah. the, the kill notification on top right, that immediately you should just rotate. Okay. So here we are, rotation is a little bit late, but it's okay. And you notice that you're relying a lot on like your the, the full screen map, because your, your minimap is too small, or well, your minimap is centered on yourself. Yeah. Okay, kitchen. I'll be up. Oh, you made a footstep. He knows you're here now. That was an omen, though. Omen's still here. But you can tell you, tell your teammate on site. Oh, nice mint. So far everything is okay. It seems like your team means just loses lots of their 1v1s. 
<clears throat> One thing I'll say is that you don't necessarily have to use your wall at the start of every, wall, every round, They're like very defensively. You can always think that, mm. oh, I can save my wall for a potential retake. Okay. Especially in this scenario yeah, where right. you put this wall, but it doesn't necessarily um, isolate any angles. Right? You're still holding the exact same angle, and the enemy is still going to peak the exact same angle. So this is basically the same situation where you're, you're playing mids, and you, you're holding the most common angle. This is the exact same thing. You're holding the most common angle. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Down. Okay. You will not kill my ally. Would they do which sort of makes sense because we have Marshall, but the other things that uh, we want to, well, our Sova is, is rotating through mid, so I would say probably just rotate to the Sova. Worst case scenario, if Sova gets to a gunfight with someone mid or looking for mid or kitchen, then you can immediately help him. But best case scenario okay. is that your rotation is much faster compared to taking this, this longer route. Okay. Okay, looks like Sova is going for... Okay, he's assaulting, never mind, he's not flanking anymore. Don't peek this, she is up. I want to fight this. See, that would have been in time to peek. Just fit this Rena and get out of here. Well, woman TP'd behind you. Presumably. She defeated you. Okay. <laughs> Just think. <laughs> But besides, I'm not gonna talk about the the aim here. I'm gonna talk more about okay. the the sound cues. So, it's say for example that um, if you were to close your eyes, right? I'm, I'm gonna play play this video. If you have your eyes closed and try to um, name all the unique sound cues that you hear, right? Mm -hmm. So right there, we hear rain of flash to our right. And then yeah. we hear a rain and dismiss to our right. And then we hear sage wall to our left. And then we hear an omen teleport, right? All these all these things, right? What does this tell us? Yeah. It tells us that the Reina has burned dismiss aggressively into CT spawn. She's probably hunting for you because they know that you're somewhere in rafters. So you you're probably gonna be fighting this Reina pretty soon. Second thing is that the Sage has walled off screens. And that means most likely that Reina is alone, unless the, the sage decided to like wall herself up, or she pushed past the wall or something. But most likely, this Reina is alone. Third thing okay. is that the omen has teleported, and most of the time, the, when they teleport, it's not just to like just randomly teleport around sight, but instead it's to teleport onto a high ground, specifically a high ground that they they can't otherwise access through like a, a rope or something. So. I would assume that the omen has teleported onto uh, rafters. Okay, okay. so with all these values yeah. in mind, that you you're about to or you're about to take a one one with this Reina, most likely, and or you're forced to, to take this one one, and you're on a, a, a timer basically because the omen has TP'd to to rafters and he's also going to start pushing behind you. Okay. So, unfortunately, it's kind of like a lose situation if, if they play this correctly, where the Reina peaks and the Owen peaks at the same time, that you're not really going to be able to kill both of them. But probably your best bet is to push one of those angles first to try to take that 1v1 early before they can set up a 2v1. And then try to win okay. that, followed yeah. by winning the other 1v1. Hmm. Right, but the, the the main thing I want to point out here is like the awareness. Like 
there's there's so much information that you can get just from sound cues alone that tells you so many things like, like all these things i just outlined you hear the rain of flash you hear the rain of dismiss you hear sage roll and you hear omen tp and that tells you like everything and tells you everything and also tells you like what is about to happen and then based on that you can come up with a, a game plan figure out what what's the best play what should i do okay all right any questions so far yeah. uh not really uh, i think my my ability usage is uh not that great okay. most of the rounds i still have my orb left and uh, i still have to use my alt uh, thus far mm. yeah so viper is kind of like a, a controller slash sentinel hybrid and it's hard to it's kind of situ like her ability her utility is like very very situational it's not like like a um a cypher trip that i just let me just put trips here and there and then that's it man my work is done or it's not like a sage wall with like i hear footsteps i put my wall up i put my ice orb, whatever slow them down and my work is done but viper is like really flexible with her with her utility like sometimes you can use it to isolate this angle that angle or you're mauling a bomb you plan to do some lineups or you might ultimate early to like shut off to like completely stop a push for example etc so like her utility okay. is, it's hard to say like this is like what you should be doing with utility every single time because there's never an, an, a um a a perfectly correct way to put a wall a perfectly correct way to use ultimate a perfectly correct way to use a molly it's always like very situational but I will say that generally you should look for opportunities to make use of your utility, especially your ultimate. So even like at the start of this round, going back to I'm going to start of this round, like we might consider like, oh, I'm going to have some sort of plan to use my ultimate this round. And then, okay, maybe I'll, let's say, for example, that I'm going to alt B and then solo B with like a shorty and then that's going to free up resources for my team so that I can tell my solo, hey, don't don't bother coming to B, just like go stack A with everyone else. I'll, I'll solo B. Right, that could be one example. Another example could be like, okay, we, we rotate to A. We realize that the enemy is like pretty much committing to A. One option you have here is that you just alt A site. And that shuts down their push and then you then you can tell your team hey give up a or maybe you can keep one person a but have people rotate to mid and help help the silver because silver is in a really good position to shut down rotations for example yeah. so just some examples not necessarily saying that there's any best or right or wrong way to to use your ultimate or use your utility I just feel like very situational. Yeah, okay. All right. Any other questions? Uh no, no that's it. Uh, um, well, yeah. Okay. So then this scenario where you get all this all this sound cues okay. and that tells us exactly what's gonna happen. They do one twenty time. And then we would just ignore the that's just aim, you can always practice that later. Okay, so next round. Again you have you still have your ultimates and like you should be thinking about a way to to use your ultimates. And if you have an operator, most likely you're not gonna use your ultimates. So something to consider mm -hmm. is that maybe this round you decide to buy a judge and then you you alt like when you expect them to push or some bomb set or, or some area that they need to push to etc or whatever and then maybe yeah. next round you decide to up when you don't have your ultimate mm. okay yeah, so just some ideas it's interesting wall Okay, so this is an example that works pretty well, actually. 
So besides this, we are ignoring that. It's this. That your wall now perfectly isolates the the bottom of a site, like the attacker side of a site. Okay. So this is generally what you want to do, or what you want to accomplish with your utility, or utility in general, is that you use utility to help isolate angles. Right, so here you're using your, your your viper wall to isolate the angle from from the A orb. And that allows you to very very safely, very easily take an aggressive off angle where you only have to worry about this one angle. You only have to worry about nest. Yeah. So so this is really good. And then you should realize that there's no point in aiming at the wall because you're not going to see anyone like through this wall. They can only peek from nest, or they can only push through the wall. Yeah, true. So basically, you just I messed up yeah, there. just keep your crosshair at nest. And I think if if you realize that earlier, you you would have killed that sage instead of like trying to flick yeah. back and forth. Reloading. Mm. Like you're you're rushing your shots a little too much. I don't think that needs to hit you. It's okay. I feel like you're just moving too much, too jittery. You see the sage here. You know that that she has to peek to escape. I mean, unless she like she walls herself up or something, she has to peek to escape. So just like hold. The angle a little bit to the right, so ex you expect it to wide swing. That's what I would expect it to wide swing. And then, like, which she does. So we kind of rush, again, we yeah. are like, rushing our shots a lot. Like, even like... Right here, it's almost like we're, we're, we're moving with, for a shot or something. Oh, and then now you'll see it's stuck. Uh, you'll see it's stuck with if I wait. Yeah. Okay, I guess I'll reopen you'll see. Well, we'll see it's frozen completely. Great. I think I need to work a lot on my aim. I mean, your aim can always be better. I think there's other things to focus on at the moment. Like even this situation here is not necessarily about like aim and how well you can flick to this target. It's more about trying to predict what is about to happen. That you see the stage here that she's most likely going to have to wide swing to escape that like this is like part of crosshair placement right when we expect our target to to wide swing we should position our crosshair not this close to the corner but it said farther like far farther away from the corner in, in anticipation of them wide swinging from the corner okay and the second part okay, too is that besides aim like your, your crosshair your, like uh, your your aim here is not that bad. It's more so that you're you're either one you're shooting too early, or two you're you're constantly moving when you're taking a shot, and then you you kind of end up like shooting through the wall. Actually, I, I think that, that that shooting through the wall is a, is a side effect that because of that you you weren't um, thinking that she was gonna wide swing, right? Because like. You're keeping your crosshair way too close to the corner, thinking that she's going to, like, make, this is more for like a, a jiggle peek. If you expect it to jiggle, this this is what you would hold. But if you okay. expect it to to wide screen, wide swing, here she ends up wide swinging, like that, and then you have to like flick to correct your crosshair placement, and you end up like over flicking and hitting the wall. Right, that's basically what happens. 
So don't think too much about your, your, your specifically your aim or specifically your, your mouse control. Try to think about the, the enemy. Think about what are, what are they going to, how are they going to peek me? Are they going to white swing? Are they going to tight peek? Are they, are they, are they going to jump peek? Or like, what, what's the shortest path for this enemy to get to cover, for example, etc. Try to predict their, their, their pathing. Okay. And then instead of like relying heavily on like landing this, this crazy flick shots, instead try to think about where should I be putting my cross here? Should I put it close? Should I put it far? Okay. Oh, how did he get to the left? What is over watching? The woman had uh, used the salt earlier. I didn't take that. Hmm? Behind us all oh, was Omen the whole time or did he just TP out in here? Hmm, okay, I'll just... Player standing. I'll just assume there's a fluke. <laughs> Somehow he's, he's stuck past the, the solo. Get ready for possible TP. Just in case. Okay, no TP happening. This is a really good position by the way. But you should tell your ways like this whole time that uh, you're ulting. Yeah, you should just just solo side. Tell your team to focus on mid and B. Also, I'm not sure if you're you're coming or not, so let's switch your teammates, but you should also come that one person is A, probably the omen, but we're not entirely sure. And that's all you hear. Just to give some information. You've got mail. You should tell your ways to not bother with A. Spike yeah, planted. exactly. <laughs> okay, interesting. I wouldn't have to be here. Because by, by going snowman, this is a like guaranteed gonna be a long range fight. Yeah. Instead I would um, try to path through kitchen, for example, where you can take potentially more close range engagements. Right? You have close range angles that you can you can clear and play and peek from, like kitchen or from top of sites, for example. Maybe from like yeah. from kitchen to mid. All those are much shorter distance angles compared to peeking from snowmen. <laughs> also don't peek too early, don't peek this yet. Okay, the smoke's gonna be found. Yeah, that's good tomorrow. Now we save. Now we just get exits. Now we take Reese's gun and we save Reese's gun. Possible. They're gonna see you from angle advantage here. Okay, this is better. Yeah, free gun. <laughs> No one will remember them. Okay, so first. Okay. No actually, did you have your E that much? I think you did. Okay. Yeah, you, you actually still had your, your E because you ulted from A sides. So automatically, yeah. right, you can think of some sort of plan to use your E to help you, help you and your team retake site, for example. And the best way to do that is because you have again you have a spectre that you can use your E to to help reduce the range on, on some of these angles. So okay. for example that here we're like we're we're thinking we're gonna push from snowman, right? But from snowman, oh. like this is guaranteed it could be a long range. You have to you have to peak danger, you have to peak yellow, you have to peak sight. These are all like thirty to fifty meter 
like angles, right? But imagine, let's say, for example, again, like if you went kitchen, and then even if you don't fully commit to kitchen, let's say you just go temporarily, temporarily in kitchen just to set up your, your e, set up your wall, and that's you put a wall um, a little bit in front of, of yellow. Okay. Right. Uh, so you set the wall up there. Yeah. Then okay, maybe just uh, okay, we're gonna go snowman, whatever. But then at this point, imagine you put your wall up here, right? Now it becomes mm -hmm. like really easy to take space, right? You can easily take snowmen. You can easily get very close to site and then work your way around site and take these close to mid range engagements or potentially potential engagements, sure. yeah. which are all yeah, things sure. that you want. Definitely things that you want as when you have a spectre. Mm -hmm. But in this situation here, you're facing an op, and you just have a spectre. There's absolutely no way you win this. So again, main thing to take away here, not necessarily your aim, but your utility usage. Think about how we can use our utility to isolate angles. And also too, how we can use our wall for retake. Don't always think, oh, I have to use my wall to start the round. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just fast rotate. Because... Down A. Well, actually, let me ask you that over here, we knife out, and we want to rotate, and we decide to go CT spawn. Why do we decide to go CT spawn? I think I was, I, I just didn't want to die by rotating to mid. I just wanted to take the safer route. Well, let me ask you, how can you die from mid? Can, can an enemy be mid right now? Uh, I, I think, yeah, since the service already covered that, uh, should have been safe. So it is safe or not safe? It's safe. Yeah, so so you're right. Silver is already covering mid. That there's no way that an enemy could be kitchen or enemy could be pushed up from CT spawn or whatever, because mm -hmm. your silver is, is already pushed up and like taking that mid control. So yeah, instead of like taking this longer and slower rotation, instead we can take a faster rotation by rotating through mid. Yeah, the follow up thing true. too is that. Even if the server does not have control of it, just the fact that he's playing mid, like he's from B, peeking into mid right now, and then we decide to start rotating, even though right now server does, technically does not have control of mid, I would still rotate to mid. And like if the server gets into a gunfight, then we can be there immediately to back him up. But we can't do that if we're taking a long rotation to CT spawn. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I think I missed most of these details. Uh, Spike down A. Tend to miss these details. So now, like, if you decided to do the faster rotation, you would already be like pretty close to the bomb already. But now we're we're still in CT spawn. There's no way we can be of any help for the next at least five to ten seconds. And then right now, like, imagine if we were. With our server, we can we can set up a crossfire in T-Spawn right now with our server, but now yeah. like, look at our server, right? That we lose the Reyna, and then the server who was originally thinking about pushing up and flanking behind them. You look at the server right now, right? Like suddenly he, he turns around, he like, peeks them, he, he turns around, and then he starts playing passive, right? And he gets into a good fight yeah. too. Yeah. So like we really need to like speed things up ASAP to like help the server, help the server, help the server. <laughs> There's no way they could be B yet. There's no way they could be B yet. So just, uh, uh, I was planning to camp there in case they rotate. You, you, the idea is fine, but you shouldn't walk because uh, here you see the the jet who is uh, out, like outside of, of pipes, right? And then the server picks the the remaining two players. Well, actually, I take that back because the the race is still unknown. We still on number, but most likely the whole enemy team is A site. Unless yeah. the, the only possibility is if Vaze was uh, like sitting AFK outside of, out of B sites, 
then possibly there could be someone besides. Oh but at this point here, like the the safe assumption is that all all three enemies are, are A site or outside of A site right now. Oh, that's right. And still outside of A sites. So we actually just killed one person. So at this point, that maybe someone could be T spawn, but they they're not they're not crossed through mid yet. And there's absolutely no way that someone could be besides. There's no way someone could be even be green yet. So if you wanted to, you could just like knife out, run all the way up to the the B orb, and then like play some random off angle there or something, or play um, with your your Q, your smoke, to as as a sentinel to sentinel ish to isolate angles and like slow down a potential push from there. Okay. So basically. Use the map control. Use the information that your team has has gained for you to improve your positioning, Im improve your okay. timing. Okay. So positioning being that you could play in a much more uh, random, like off angle, to hold B instead of if you were to walk here. Now you your only option is to either play sight or, or play yellow, which are much more predictable. Yeah, this is like much more predictable. Okay, so we know winner is A. Thirty seconds left. Walk, Okay, so now we could be B. Right now, now that ten to twenty seconds has passed, we should walk. I appreciate you. So when when we don't have information on the last person we should be walking just like this we should be walking okay we're walking and then okay we turn around and we, we want to rotate which makes sense but we shouldn't full spin because now like that that raise like now she knows where you are because you you made noise yeah but luckily you aim just like I thought so he was somewhere on site at first uh, he was only after that I noticed he was spent. You have to like constantly be aware, be aware like as you like say for example that you're, you're doing this rotation you're doing this rotation and you're not even actually looking at things specifically if you should be looking at the kitchen most likely that while you're doing this rotation you keep uh keep glimpsing Take like quick snapshots of the minimap. See where's my team right now? Where what are they doing? Where are they playing? Where are they positioned? What are you looking at? Do they see anything? Always be asking these questions every time that you take like a one to two second look at the minimap. So while this is okay. paused right here, like we'll see that the the Sova is playing either rafter uh, yeah, it's probably probably rafters and picking over A sites onto belt. And the Rays is playing on uh, A sites tucked in. And then watching over maze, right? Yeah. yeah. So okay, while well, we're making this rotation, still so keeping eye king, and okay, we see something has changed. What changed? Now the rays is picking the A orb, and then the server is starting to rotate toward somewhere. He looks like he's rotating toward rafters. Okay. And now, while we're still in rafters, now rays is rotating toward screens. Okay, and then the raise dies. Now that tells us that the enemy, especially from, from where you heard that sound, the enemy is mid. That should be like an yeah. immediate thing. And then when you know like the last place is mid, you shouldn't like make noise here. That gives away your position. But we're in the headshot. Pretty good aim so far. One shot. Fire and your team just loses every single level one. <laughs> happy jet, happy jet. She's gonna get a good fight. She's gonna peek. She's, she's peeking. There it is. Click the wall. 
picked up a big section of the wall. Then you can think about what to do after. Yeah. Oh. Once that works, you hit him. We still have some bundle ropes. That's it. Now you break the wall, but it's like really late. Now it's already been like 20 seconds. Yeah, so it's just too slow to play here. Again, I want to reiterate, like, as soon as the wall goes up, you should be thinking about how do I do this wall? That you should look to break a section wall as quickly and as safely as possible. I mean, you do have to be careful that someone could be standing on the wall, or someone could be, like, on top of ropes or something, so okay, clear all these angles first. But after that, look to break the wall as soon as possible, because the longer that this wall stays up, again, the, long, the more that value that this wall gets, and the more that, the longer that you stay isolated from this fight. While this jet is, like, yeah. fighting the person on the rafters, that you might not be able to do anything, you're not really able to add any value. And this jet is like, she's looking to, to, to push onto rafters again. And then, luckily, that, that omen like plays really aggressive, and then even if he kills the jet, that you get a free free kill on him. But if they play correctly, that yeah. that he won't he wouldn't necessarily be in a vulnerable position. Mm. Okay, so what do we talk about so far in this half? That uh, one, don't uh, always use your wall at the start of the uh, start of every round. Consider using your wall for retake. Yeah. Follow up to this is when whenever possible, look to use your um, your. Is it like your, your Q smoke instead? Since it is reusable, like able to yeah. be you pick that repositioned. Okay, and then another bullet point is try to play to your gun strengths. If you have a spectre. Let you take as many close range engagements as possible. Next bullet point try to use your utility to help isolate angles or help retake. A little bit slow. So let's go back to this beginning of this round here. So we wall off maze. Yeah, we wall off maze. That's sight in half. Okay, great. All goes up. At this point, we should just push, 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 push. Because you look at look at your your two duelists right now. Your your Rana is just like completely pushing past your wall into maze, which you, she probably shouldn't do. And then your jet is pushing the right side. So yeah. there's no way that you're going to get to a gunfight anywhere here, inside smoke, or anywhere here to your right. There's no way an enemy could be anyone here. right? Based on where, like right about here, that the only places an enemy could be is rafters and screens. And possibly backside. Because okay. you're... Your ra your um, your Reina has cleared maze, and your jet has cleared right side, plus uh, behind four ten box. Yeah. So immediately at this point, you should think like I, I should just like push immediately, and I should run for knife out, and I should get the orb immediately if I wanted to, or I should plant immediately, or some combination of the above. Mm. Okay. The second thing is that that because Urena and Jet are so far pushed up that they're very likely to get into engagements or get into a gunfight with the enemy. And then nobody on your team is going is in position currently in position to back them up. Yeah. So for example, if someone peeked from screens or someone peeked from rafters and then fought your jets or they fought Urena, 
that that's a bummy one. Yeah. So another rule of thumb is to generally look for um, look for ways to turn one v ones that your team takes into two v ones. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and uh, I'll find some, some other examples later, but uh, do you have any questions so far? Uh, no, it's uh, all good. Okay. So just like that, there was uh, two people screens, I think. Yeah, the jet, mm -hmm. jet and the omen were the screen slash raptors. Just plant immediately, plant immediately. And now you lost your opportunity to plant. So you had, you had a brief opportunity to plant run around here, like right after this nade goes off, that you can you can plant on site. You have, you have to tuck yourself there because Raptor is not cleared. But right now your jet is, is watching screens and your silver is uh, in maze, I think. And supposedly yeah. the raise is watching your right side for now. So if you plant right now, this would be almost a guaranteed plant. But because you you take too long and you decide oh, I'm gonna pick pick uh, raptors, which you probably shouldn't do by yourself, and then now two of your teammates are dead. Now you've lost your opportunity to plant. Yeah. And actually, there were two people flanking. Interesting. Bike down A. Team A. So, did you notice something else during that round? Sorry, I didn't get you. Did you notice anything else at this round? Uh, you, none of us is checking flank, except... Right, so no one's watching flank, but also that the Sage, like, flanked, right? Yeah. So... It's not necessarily a fault in your body, like, yeah, flanks happen, but the point I'm trying to make here is to download this information for later rounds. The, the, the Sage has flanked, not not only that she flanked, but she flanked extremely fast, because, like, she was, like, already here within less than 30 seconds or something like that, which means that yeah. she, like, played really, really aggressive. She flanked really, really fast, right? Mm. So, something to think about in future rounds that... Oh, this sage flanked once, she's probably going to do it again. Be aware of it. Okay. Okay, so for now, we'll just download this as, as information, and we'll, we'll see if we can leverage that in later rounds. Last player standing. Spike down. Are you born now? turn down. Breathe deep. Let's see, your team is half... Force three people are forcing. I would probably force as well then. Whenever I see, I see my team forcing, I would, I would generally just force with them. Reloading. Okay. Breathe deep. Say That would be right. Let's see who has the marshal. Raze has the marshal. I would probably go with the raise. So, two things. One is that whenever your team has like an, an imbalance of weapons, like one person has has a good weapon, or two people have a good weapon, and everyone else just has pistols, like you just have the classic, two people have ghosts, the raise has a marshal, and then someone else has, has a stinger. Like, right? Stinger, yeah. I don't know, why, why would you buy a stinger on ice, icebox? Interesting. But probably the most valuable weapon on your team right now is the marshal. So what I would do is that I will look for opportunities to play around that marshal. Whether it's okay. that, to, to help the marshal like um, take engagements, to help maybe I could use some utility to help isolating angles for them. Or like I could like say for example with this vase she's she's hugging the mid wall, so mid barrier, so most likely she's gonna like peek into mid, somewhere in mid. Then maybe yeah. I can be like, oh I'm gonna use my smoke to to smoke off under tube. So that way she can peek um, boiler, for example, with confidence, without having to worry about tube. Yeah. 
or or if I follow up with that will smoke under tube and I'll I'll swing for her right because I have a, I have a classic mm -hmm. I can I can run faster and swing faster than the raise tell the raise hey I'm, I'm gonna swing mid for you and I want you to trade me right that'd be a good example okay and the third thing too besides uh, like all these all these potential options that you have for setting up your raise is that maybe you as long as you play with your raise that if she um, body shots the enemy or she gets to a gunfight that you can immediately peek or double peek with her and then turn the 1v1 that she's taking or will take on boiler into a 2v1 okay. and then help like help secure that kill and worst case scenario if she dies now you have the marshal now the marshal continues to live on and be useful to your team yeah so to to really to summarize this is that um, when your team has an imbalance of weapons, try to to uh, look for opportunities to play around your teammates with the biggest guns. Okay. Okay. So that's the first thing, and then. Let's say for the reason we decide to do something else, which is fine. We decide to peek be long, okay, fine. But we should not peek it like this, which is like a wide swing, follow by going back to cover <laughs> with a classic. We should, if, if our goal here was just to temporarily peek be long to, to check if enemy is there, then we should jump peek. Okay. Which is like a much less committed type of peek than swinging out with a classic because like you swing out here with a classic imagine if there was an enemy here and because of this white how far you're swinging you're forced to take this this fight you're gonna lose this fight you're gonna die because you just have a classic that person has most likely a better gun yeah okay and if they're playing from that angle most likely they have a marshal with some sniper mm. okay so you should always think about what you're trying to accomplish when you peek something if it's just an informational peek and you're not necessarily trying to commit to a gunfight or you definitely in this case you definitely don't want to commit to any sort of gunfight then you should look to do other types of non-committal or less committal peaks for example jump peeking mm, okay okay i'll get that so try not to reflect like, too much I mean it paid off there but at this range like it's pretty lucky you, you managed to land any of these right click shots that you should really yeah. just just left click her there was smoke in your your, your soba mm. So you put the wall up, great, so your team feels a lot safer to, to plant, but you should also follow this up with your Q. Use your Q, okay. or yeah, probably just your Q, and put a smoke on top of the silver so that he feels very comfortable, very safe to plant. Right now, he, he, the reason he's not planting right now is because he's worried. He's worried that that's an enemy might swing him as soon as he taps the bomb. Yeah. So... Okay. Since you're Viper, you have the smoke, and then actually, where's your jet? Your jet is across the map, so unfortunately, you don't have any other smokes right at the moment. You just have your your Q. That I would spend your Q, throw the Q on top of this on top of the sofa, so that he feels very safe, very safe to to start planting. And then, worst case scenario, you can always pick up your smoke after the plant is done, and put the smoke somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. You should pick up Mina's gun, pick up Mina's gun. Uh, that Molly doesn't do anything. Don't pick this up a classic. So, okay. Two things to think about here. Is that, okay, we're thinking we want to cover this over while he tries attempts to plant the bomb 
but mm. but but two things one is that we have a classic so ideally we should be playing closer we should get to as close as possible so that we can make use of our right click okay but the trick so here is that more into the site. yeah push more into the site basically look for okay. look for close range engagements that you can take where you can right click mm -hmm. somebody because like what happens here is that here you find yourself finding a very long range fight this is like a 30 meter fight almost right against uh yeah. against the, this raise here and this is like a really yeah. hard fight for you to win because you have you just have a classic but imagine if you were closer now you're within right click range that's much better mm -hmm. that's true the only other thing to consider is that because it's a trade-off right because you, you you would be technically taking um a bigger risk by paying close and the, the risk is that if you die that your team no longer has the the smokes available so then Ooh. then you might you might think that oh okay instead of playing close to get kills with my classic with, with my right click and make use of my classic then I would just look to play safe and make sure I don't overcommit to anything or I don't peek into bad angles. Right? So I'll try to play okay. less less yeah. criminal. Mm. So if you had that idea that I'm just gonna focus on staying alive, that we should basically not fight this. We should just like play behind cover almost all the time. And then at this point, we should we should think that we should get, we should go get Reina's gun because Reina had. Uh, a spectre or something. She had some sort of SMG. I can't tell what gun she has. Oh, okay, never. She has a stinger. I thought she had a spectre. So maybe a stinger is not really worth it. But I was just kind of thinking immediately, like as soon as that that raise dies, that I have a, I have an opportunity to pick up Rena's gun. But this one maybe is not worth it because it's just a stinger, it's not very useful. We see the person at long. And this is the trade-off that, that we have is that because we're so far away that we're not really able to take this fight against the person along. So the best thing that we could do is focus on staying alive. Okay. And focus on staying alive. And that, instead, instead of peeking to angles, we look to get value with our wall, basically. Well, look to get value by playing lineups mm -hmm. and okay. the third thing is we look to get value by watching your team's flank make sure that the enemy does not come from t-spawn and that's a perfect opportunity for you because you can accomplish all three things mm. where one you play a close range angle somewhere inside the 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 whatever the, one of the cubbies or something or whatever whatever that thing is called between the b-site and t-spawn like these are all like close range angles where a, a classic right click is going to be super deadly so that plays to your, your weapon yeah. advantage second thing is that you're playing safe away from where most of the gunfights going to happen yeah. and third is that you because you're playing safe is that now you have your you can because you're focusing on staying alive you can get value just with your e have make sure you have have your your wall active when it's needed and the fourth is that you're also in good position to play lineups right yeah, that's true. So in this situation here, that's probably what I would do. I would look to cover the team's flank and then do all these other things. Play lineups, play safe, make sure I stay alive, uh, use my wall whenever my team needs it. Etc. Okay. But definitely not like this. Definitely, if I'm trying to stay alive, I shouldn't be peeking, peeking B long. I know the vein is there. I know I'm like one bullet away from death. I shouldn't be peeking, peeking B long. Like this here. Okay. I should just be hiding. Even right, like right there. Like, again, we pick belong again. Okay, we decided to push up. Because now we have to, because the Soviets didn't plant for some reason. Okay, unfortunate. Mostly that your your soul is kind of failed you there. Like your soul which you just planted ten years ago. <laughs> Basically, right after he killed the race, he should just be planting. He's too focused on 
putting this 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 Reyna, and if he dies, there's no one to back him up. There's no one to trade him out. There's no one to pick up the palm. If he dies, then the round yeah. is probably gonna be lost. Yeah. And then he oh, kind of ends up dying. But maybe, possibly, actually, now that I think about it, all this could have been avoided if you put the smoke down to to make him feel safe to plant the bomb. That if your if your smoke was like um, on that default spot where he was originally planning, like right here, if your smoke was right here, mm. then you can make the solo feel very safe about planning. That he doesn't have to like go for these um, risky plays. Instead, he can just like just plant the bomb and just play with the rest of the team. Oh yeah, and you can That's communicate true. to yourself. Say, hey, I have, I have smoke. Just just go plant out smoke for you. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And then uh, actually, your jet clutches very good. <laughs> Thanks. This is gonna be fun. I know, I've seen a lot of it. Ada spike here. So let me pause here and ask you, what are you thinking about this round? Yeah, it's it's a round I think where we have the weapon advantage. Okay. So what what is your plan? Uh, I don't really, uh, um, I don't know. Okay, so you you said that your team has a weapon advantage, which is correct. Then yeah. how does that affect your your game plan for this round? How how would you play this round knowing that your team has a weapon advantage? Uh, should we rush them? Do we go all fight together? Okay, so we stay stay together. That's a good yeah. idea. What else? What is that? It? Uh, take long range fights, maybe. If they okay. have uh, classics. Okay. Yep. Long range fights. Good. What else? What what else goes to your um, mind during rounds like these where you have a weapon advantage and the enemy team is just gonna have classics? I'm not sure actually. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Okay. So you have an idea that you wanna stay together with with your team yeah. or 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 basically it ends up being like take less risks basically. So instead of like, it's you're not necessarily doing it this round, but say for example, if you decided to lurk this round, then that lurk becomes like really risky, more, more risky compared to a, a normal round, a normal gun round where both both teams have guns. Because the the okay. the risk of a failed lurk when the enemy team is is saving is that you give your gun to the enemy, right? For example. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we have the idea that we want to play safe, we want to save our team, just look to stay together, and then take long range engagements, that's definitely key, because you know that they, they just have classics, and you know maybe they have a, a deagle, but you'll still be able to win that with Phantom and Vandal. So that's all great things to think about. And the other thing too is that whenever a teammate dies, like the, the other thing to think about is that we want to deny the enemy, whenever possible, from gaining a gun. Okay. So think about whenever one of your teammates dies, that that where that your your teammate's body becomes a crucial point to temporarily hold. Okay. Because the uh, the enemy team like enemy team like if they killed your you know, say your vase pushes into A and she dies on top of the A orb. Now it becomes like somewhat crucial that someone camps the gun basically or someone tries to deny the gun from falling to the enemy team okay so while you're playing all that you have the idea that you know say you there you want to take long range engagements but also keep in mind whenever a teammate dies or whenever we, we lose a gun to the enemy also keep 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 track of like which enemy has that gun, for example, and be careful about taking engagements with that person. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Oh, okay. I know I see a lot of it. Kind of important spawning. Enemy spotted B. Reload. In this situation, I would just save your money for lineups. I wouldn't I wouldn't do that wall. Because let me let me pause here. What do you think about this wall? Yeah, that's actually not needed this round. Yeah, not not only uh, is it uh, not needed, but it 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 sort of helps the enemy team in in a way because like your team has has the long range weapons, right? But you, you're denying your team from taking those long range engagements. Instead, you want you want yeah. to take as many long range games as possible. And you don't want to block off view of snowman. You want to have full view of snowman almost the whole time, so that your Rainer with the Vandal, your your Jet with the Vandal or Phantom, whatever, can peek and take those engagements from yellow to send to the send to to snowman. Yeah, that's true. And the follow up to that is that because you're you're walling this off, is that an enemy that is rotating from snowman can now safely take more favorable favorable close range angles like around sites for example and that, that yeah. plays into like the enemy's team's like um advantages where they, they have classics. Get advantage from that yeah. Part. yeah but that's exactly what they want to do when they have classics they want to get into right click range i want to get to right around the corner of the default bomb plants and then threaten with a, a classic right click which will one tap anyone yeah okay one enemy remaining okay let me pause here let me ask you what are you thinking i was just uh, spamming behind the wall Okay. Well, what else are you not thinking? Not sure of. Uh, right when bomb is planted, it's five v two. Then the the Rainer dies, so now it's five v one. And then what's going on to your mind? Uh, not really. I think it's now a easy round. Stay safe. Just stay alive. Okay. Yep. It's an easy round. The round is pretty much won. What else are you thinking? Uh, or let's put it this way: If you were the Omen, you were in the Omen shoes, what would you want to do? What would be your game plan if you were the Omen? He would try to kill someone and get their gun. Right, exactly. He should try to kill someone, get, take their gun, or get an exit kill, take their gun. Yeah. So knowing that, what do you think you can do to? Help prevent that. Oh, probably stay together. Stay together? Okay. Stay with who? Who do we stay with? Uh, who do we stay with? Yeah, who do we stay with? Uh, maybe the jet now, since he's low. The jet? Okay. Yeah, but I like, like uh, with the current position, I guess uh, I should be helping Sova. Helping Sova, okay. Why Sova? Uh, he's, I think, the farthest away and uh, probably an omen somewhere near him, too. Right, exactly. So you should look to help your most isolated teammates. Right now, your jet, yeah, she's low. She's in danger of dying. Maybe she gets like one tap by a deagle or something. But even if, even if jet were to die, she's. The, the, the omen would not be in a position to pick up Jet's gun. Yeah. But if your Pick. Sova dies, for sure, that omen's gonna get Sova's gun immediately. Mm. So, Oof. in situa situations like this, where like, okay, the round is in the bag, but think beyond just winning the round, but think about 
future rounds, think about what is the enemy gonna, gonna try to do? Oh, if I was Owen, I would try to get extra kills. I would try to steal someone's gun and then try to save that gun. So I would look to yeah. make sure that I don't lose my gun in, or that my team does not lose their guns to the omen right and then even in, in like post pan situations still that the the general rule of thumb is to look at where your teammates are positioned and find the most either the most isolated teammates or the most aggressive teammates and go help them okay so in this situation your your sova is like super isolated and then your Reyna is is playing pretty aggressive, where she's pushing past the smoke and pushing into the mid now. Yeah. That part of what I would do is that I would look to help our Silva, but while on the way to getting to our Silva, I would help the Reyna for I don't know for whatever seconds that we're in mid rotating to the Silva. Okay. So. I guess another way to think about it is think of it as like a buddy system where you, you want to stick together, you want to you want to stick with some sort of buddy, but how do we choose this buddy? We we follow this flow chart. We think about who's isolated, who needs the most help, who's playing the most aggressive. And then we decide, okay, we help that person. Yeah. Okay. Any questions so far? Oh, no questions. Okay. Enemy remaining. I would if your if your goal is to watch flank, I would watch it from further back. Because again, you want to play to your your gun advantage, your long range advantage. Yeah. And crits, so easy rounds. Your race should probably buy something, but it's okay. Careful about picking this too early. One thing about pushing A is that people from belt, like you're on belt, you can actually peek sight before you, the rest of your team can peek from um, below nest. Like you look at where your race yeah. is when you decide to peek this. You decide to peek this, and your raise is nowhere near ready to peek with you. So be careful about peeking too early. Make sure that when you you peek, yet you you try to set up a double peek with your t your teammates, or you you okay. wait for your team to bait some attention before you commit to something. Okay. So keep that in mind. Just be careful about this. Feeling bad. Flash, Okay, good ball. I will pick up the orb immediately. Pick up the orb immediately so you can ult. And okay, then we don't think about it. Okay. In that case, we should throw our Q to help our server feel safe. Okay, now we should ult immediately and plant. Okay, now we should ult. Gonna pick the sage, get for kill. Too late. Pick the sage, push her, she's reloading, she has no bullets. Mm, too slow, too slow. Okay, let's go back to this. So you put the wall, okay, great. Great wall, I love it. Isolates maze. Now you only have to worry about right side. And then he's noticed that this Vena is pushing really fast. So ideally, you should just like push. Really fast with her. And like in general, you should just push really fast. Whenever your team is playing really aggressive, you should also play really aggressive. Don't just like continue standing here, hanging around at the orb while your Reyna is like already entering. She's already in a gunfight like that. She's fighting the sage, right? And then yeah. actually, what happened is that your Sova, who was originally saying the dart, supposedly, that you took so much time just standing around that now your Sova is like ahead of you and like pushing with, with your Reyna. I mean, really, that probably should have been you because you were in, in front. Okay. And then, after you realize that, okay, now the Silver and the Rain are together, that I don't necessarily have to be with them, that I can get value elsewhere. What's the next best thing? I should get, I should get the orb. Actually, right here, like, I would consider just picking up the orb immediately. 
and then taking the gamble that Arena doesn't uh, take any gunfights by herself. Because if I get this orb and then I ult the site, that's almost like a guaranteed run win. Yeah. So I'll probably get the orb, ult site, it's like a super high priority. And then, okay, now we're in this situation where we're, we've isolated the left side with our wall, and it's got 33 charge left, and our solo is. Looks like he's getting ready to plant, but maybe he's worried about too many angles. Again, there's another situation where you put your Q down, you help your Sylvie feel safe. You put the smoke up for him, so you can plant inside the smoke. Yeah. And unfortunately, yeah. your Reyna is like going the completely wrong direction. She's like trying to push through the maze smoke. Two smokes, actually, plus the ice orb. That really, she should be right side helping, helping your team like play with these angles here, or helping your Sylvie plant the bomb. But unfortunately, she takes a while one and just just dies. Okay, so now you have your ult, and now you should ult immediately. Right. Even though, okay, we know that both enemies are here, then we can still ult and still basically forcefully win the round. The other option is that we take bomb, we run all, all the way to B. Yeah. <laughs> but it depends how our team plays, like... Uh, if your team is on the same page, then just running all the way to B, like all together, is like pretty safe play, pretty safe winning play actually. But if your team decides that oh we're not gonna rotate to B, we're just gonna commit, just like your race here is committing, committing to A, that means you should also commit. Okay. And like and right around here, that's okay. Your race is um, right side of A site, peeking into screens. And she sees the sage, and now she's about to get into a gunfight with the sage. When this happens, mm. that this gunfight's happening, we need to play fast, as fast as possible. That uh, while this fight's happening from um, from right side of A site to screens, that we want to get to this fight as fast as possible. So we should rush screens right now to start shooting at the sage. Okay. Good. So that way we can we can help our rays, right? Help our rays, make sure our rays wins the gunfight, or make sure we can trade out our rays and kill the sage. <clears throat> yeah. So there's three things at play here. There's awareness. So the awareness that okay, the rays our rays is, is fighting the sage, and rays is right side of sight. We know the sage in the screens. So awareness. This is about to happen or is happening. Second is positioning. Where do we want to position? We want to um, position ourselves so that we have an angle on the sage at screens. And the fastest way to get to get there is to peek from maze. And now okay. the third component is timing. Now that we know all these things and we know where we want to be, now we need to execute it as fast as possible. The longer that we wait, like the longer that we take to, to get into this gunfight or get into this position that we need to be in, then the less likely that our play is going to be successful or the, the more likely that the rays will die or the sage will die and the fight will be con concluded and you're not able to provide any value or gain any value. Okay, yeah. Right, so let's see how this plays out. That Because like we're just we're looking around and then we're walking this whole time, the rays is fighting the fighting the, the sage, and now the sage has peaked further. Now, now she's no longer in screens, but now she's like closer to a maze. So now she's like fully exposed, right? So this is like a golden opportunity. Yeah. You just push right now, you kill the sage. But because we're we're walking, we're walking, we're walking. Now the sage is gone, right? Look at the sage. Now the sage is on the other side, with an isolated one one oh. with your rays. Yeah. That's right. So. Now your, your timing is like way too slow. You've missed your opportunity to kill the sage. Now the sage kills your race. Or okay, your race somehow survives. So okay, now we have a second opportunity that while this fight is happening, we can continue, like we can still sprint forward and try to join this fight as fast as possible. Because because the sage is focused on your race, we can we can get an easy flank on the sage. Hmm. Second thing is that the sage has sprayed her entire clip or magazine. Right? Yeah. She sprayed all 30 bullets on her Spectre, and then she either has to reload, or she has to bring out her Classic. Mm. So, 
even if we weren't thinking about joining the fights before, now we have another reason to join the fight, which is, well, we can kill the Sage because she, she's too busy reloading. Or we can kill the Sage because she just has a classic and I have a Phantom. Yeah. So. And then unfortunately we took a f because we were too slow, now we were forced to take this fight with the Raze. But even in this point here, probably at this point you're probably thinking that, oh, I can get this flank on the Sage because this, this fight has been going on for like over 10 seconds now. And then, okay, then we see the Raze. So now we're forced to fight the Raze. But as soon as the Raze goes back behind cover, we should go back to our, our original game plan, which is like we fight the Sage. So what I would do here is that while this Raze is like hiding behind cover, I would just like push forward to 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 isolate the one one with the sage by tucking yourself underneath rafters. Okay. So because like we end up going back to our right behind cover, now we're now we're finding this this raise when we had another opportunity to isolate one one with the sage. So many things here. Everything is about like awareness, positioning, timing. Awareness, positioning, timing. Think, I'm always thinking about what's the best play I can make, what's the best value I can bring to my team, what can I be doing to help my team, what is happening around me, what is my team doing, what's happening, like was the gunfight happening, how fast or how slow should I be, where should I be standing, what should I be looking at, like there's so many things to, to be asking like at almost every single second of the round as things change. Yeah. Okay, any questions so far? No, no, no questions. Okay. Anyone have funds to thank you? Interesting. I'm not sure if you are aware of any lineups, but ideally if you should uh, use your Q to smoke off mid instead of your E. So as Viper you could if you know some lineups that you can use your Q to bounce it into mid and then use that okay. to smoke off mid while your team like goes to only two, right? It captures the exact same thing. Except now that you'll you'll be able to reuse your smoke. Is it and you and still have your wall be available for holding B site for example after you after you plant bomb. Okay. So look for opportunities to yeah use your Q smoke instead. Okay. Okay, a sage wall happened somewhere. Okay, we don't know where it is. I'm assuming it's two. I think we're pushing too early here. Either we're pushing too early or we're not on the same page with our team. Or oh, this Vin and this Vin is with us, yeah. Okay, Vin should try this out. We'll be fine. Player standing. Uh we have King. The team's playing fast, look. Look at the Vena. She ults, has a flashbang in her hands, holding W, flashing mid, boobot mid, guarding mid. When this happens, like when our team is playing fast, playing aggressive, we should also play fast, play aggressive. Okay. But we're too busy looking at flank, while two more teammates die. I 
Check who actually died. Get out of my way! Okay, kills the jet, okay. So jet has died, uh, bottom of tube it seems like. Okay. So, why is this important? It's because the enemy team has a Sage, and Sage has ultimate right now. That we have to be causing it of every enemy that we kill, keep, keep, keep like a mental picture of every enemy that we kill, and be ready for the possibility of a Sage res. Especially this round, which last round, potentially last round. Or match point, yeah. I should say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so... We have two teammates in two. Okay, now the open dies kitchen. We lost control of the kitchen, lost bomb. That was really bad. Your, your silver just kind of threw. Now the sage is gonna res. The Vayner is in mid. If you go fast enough, you can maybe get a timing on this Vayner. Good, good timing. The sage is still gonna res though. She's. Oh, that's unfortunate. You know, she's gonna res the jet. There it is. We should take this opportunity to wrap Snowman to get bomb. I don't know if you have time to rotate T spawn to mid. Yeah, there's only 40 seconds left. Yeah, I have not time. 30 seconds left. Yeah, this is pretty much lost on this. They they all like rush to kill you, and you kill all three of them. But if they play play smart, they just play the bomb. This one's lost. You don't have time to walk anymore. Okay, so let's go back to the building of this round here. And this reiterates that uh, unfortunately we're, we're AFK for uh, first probably 10 seconds or something. But we want to be aware of not just like the, the enemy team, but our team as well. Like, what is our team doing? Our team is playing aggressive, playing fast, ulting, sending a boom bot, flashing, holding W, darting somewhere. Right? And then the like, jet, I think she, she updrafts, right? She updrafts to aggressively peek mid immediately. She's peeking parts of boiler, right? Like your, your entire team is playing extremely fast. Like, not even five seconds yeah. to the round, all this stuff is happening. And you, your team is like already taking like most of mid control. So, when our team is playing fast and aggressive, we also want to play fast and aggressive. And then... So we're wasting too much time watching flank. At this point, I would just like look to push for our silver, push for our raise or whatever. Set both of them up as because you're a controller, you can set both of them up to make an easy entry into B instead of watching this flank, which may or may not actually happen. And then, okay, so we put a wall, although your team's not really pushed into the wall yet. And then, unfortunately, you're still with those. There's not much you can do about that, you still just shouldn't make these decisions. But at this point, okay, now you're by yourself, it's 1v3, and it's gonna be really hard to clutch this. But it's probably still probably still winnable because they don't know where you are. They only have mm. some idea of where you might be, but not exactly where you are. But you do know where the yeah. enemy is. You know where where the dead enemies are. So you can kind of predict what is gonna happen, what what the enemy is gonna try to do, right? So the first indication is uh, the first dead body, the jet. The jet has died bottom of two. Okay? Now, the second dead body is kitchen, I believe. I have to slowly kill someone. Omen. Omen dies kitchen. Okay, and second dead body is in kitchen. Okay. And then bombs down, also kitchen. The raise is kitchen. Now, the Vayner is, is uh, between mid and B. Right? Yeah. Now you know where two people are. And the, the Sage is unknown, but you can sort of predict what is she probably gonna do she's probably gonna res one of those two people ideally she if i were her, if i were her i would be resing the kitchen because that's safe is other but she yeah. could potentially also decide to res the omen which is bottom of two right Last player standing. so now you have an idea where two possibly three people are which is the whole enemy team now you have all the tools needed to make like a clutch even though it's one of these can be really hard it's still winnable <laughs> And then now you hear this vanish, if you don't know actually where she is, 
You hear who running towards you? She's running the other side apparently. Get a free kill. Okay, great. Perfect. This starts the clutch. Now they know where you are. And uh, you realize, you see the Sage actually going for the, the more riskier res for some reason. And unfortunately we, we kill the killer. This, that's like really crucial that you kill her, but okay, maybe you, you, you fail, you go kill her. But you know what's going to happen, she's um, going to res the jet. So you're still on, yeah. on a tight timeline here. You don't have time to rotate um, back to T-spawn because the bomb is down in the kitchen. So um, you have two options basically. One is that you push through, uh, push through mid and you get to the, okay. the bottom of the kitchen. Well, actually, you have three options. One is push the mid, get to the bottom of the kitchen. And the second option is you take the rope, you go to the kitchen. And the third option, you go to snowman. Right? So essentially, all three options is that you try to take this isolated 1v1 with the raise. Because you know the sage is going for a res, that she's going to be preoccupied for I don't know, the next five seconds or so doing a res on the jet, that you yeah. can take an isolated 1v1 with the raise. Okay. And then once you take that one with the raise, you get bomb. Now you 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 spend utility to help isolate some angles. Maybe you can position to get it get an alt onto the bomb side, something like that. And like right, like one thing leads to another, and the round becomes more and more winnable as you do these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, officially we really take this long way around, which left. is like there's no way you win this unless the enemy team like grows because there's no there's no time to get bomb and plant. Toxins going up. Yeah, it's it. win. Yeah. Okay. So any questions so far? Yeah. Uh just uh what, what do you what do you think I should uh, like mainly work on? Is it aim or I think? Um, I would say generally try to try to think more and try to predict situations more. Like try to predict what is about to happen. Okay. Yeah. That's true. And don't focus like too much about your aim. Like your aim seems like you you you've won most of your above ones. You've won most of your engagements. Try to think about. Other ways to get to get value. <clears throat> okay. And actually, too, that's uh, try to think about your utility more because yeah, like you said, that many times that you you die with a lot of utility available. Or there's there's many ways that you can use your utility more efficiently. Try to think about those things. Try to think about can I use my Q instead of my E because my Q is reusable but my E is not. Or try to think about. Um, how can I vary up my E? Because especially in defense, that for the most part, you've used your E either to at the start of the round to cover B or the start of the round to cover mid. Like yeah. 10 out of the 12, 12 rounds on defense, you've done that. Instead of you immediately using your utility, try to think about like, oh, I might consider saving my E for retake because I don't know, maybe I'm expecting my team to fall apart at A. Let me, um, let me play mid, expect an A push, and then use my wall to cut off A. Like maybe a wall off from, from the the A orb, for example. And okay. That that opens up more opportunities for your team, where like now your team they no longer have to play like really passive, like back site or on rafters or whatever. But with your wall activated, cutting, cutting off the entrance from the A orb. Then mm -hmm. your team can play maze mm -hmm. very safely, right? Now maze no longer becomes one and done. Now they can leverage your wall, or they can play close to your wall, etc. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's. That go. is actually really helpful. Yeah. Let's go to uh, these notes that I took here. Okay. Can you see this? Yeah. 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 So, so don't always use your wall at the start of every single round. Consider using your wall for your wall for a retake, for example. Try to think about your, your utility more. Think about what you can accomplish, what you can do with your utility, 
especially the most common use case would be using utility to isolate angles especially your controller like your utility is almost always used for isolating these angles mm -hmm. and whenever possible look to use your q smoke instead since it's reusable it would be picked up and re repositioned if you're using your e to smoke off mid for example it's on one of these ones it was like attack you use your e to smoke off mid use your q instead because your q is reusable you can use your q to smoke off mid and accomplish the exact same thing mm -hmm. and then pick it up right after Right after you're done. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, and the third bullet point. Try to play to your gun's strengths. If you have a Spectre, or even a Classic, for example, a couple of rounds you had a Classic, look to take as many close-range engagements as possible. Like, avoid peeking into long-range angles. Because if you peek into an Op, you peek into a Vano, you peek into a Guardian or Marshal, like, these are all fights that are not able to. Like, it's really hard for you to win. Unless you you completely outplay the enemy. Instead, like try to find close range angles. If you're have a spectre, you're retaking B, don't go snowman. That's a long range angle. Go kitchen. Kitchen is a close range angle. And go from kitchen to site, right? On top of site. Then you can drop on top of somebody. If someone's on, on, still sitting on, on site and you drop on top of them, that's like a guaranteed close range angle. Or if they're if they're um, playing yellow, for example, and you're on top of site, that's a much better angle. It's not ideal, but it's a much better angle than compared to if you were peeking from snowman. Well, now you, yeah. have, you have the potential to win that fight compared to if you're peeking with snowman, there's no way you win that fight. Almost impossible. Okay, so try to use your utility to help isolate angles or help retake. And try to have a plan of your ult. There's many many rounds on on defense where you kept your ult for several rounds. When even when there it was like good opportunities to use it. So if you have um, if you know for sure that the enemy is like really committing to a bomb sites, then it's not a bad idea to just burn your ult and completely stop that push. Basically, basically single handedly stop that push, and then. When, when you do that, you can tell your team, hey, I've, I've got control of A, rotate to B, rotate to mid, whatever. Let me solo A. Mm -hmm. So you communicate with your team, tell them like what to do, try to go for them, for example. Okay. So, unfortunately, yeah. I didn't really hear much comments from you. I'm not sure if it's just because it wasn't recorded, so I can't really comment too much on that. But like I only say, just try to go in these kinds of situations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, let's see, when your team has an imbalance of weapons, look for opportunities to play around your teammates with the biggest guns. So there was a round where where your team had like two or three pistols, but one or two people bought, they forced bought on second round. Even though they lost, you guys, I think you lost, lost the pistol round. Then you should look yeah. for opportunities to play around your teammate with the marshal. Right? That, would, that, that would be technically be the biggest gun that your team has, even though like, you have a Stinger, a Stinger's not really that great on, on Icebox attack. Mm. Okay. So you can do things like, you can um, use your utility to help your raise with the Marshal, like peek more confidently into angles, like she was peeking mid, you can smoke off on her tube, because you can push into tube for her while she takes engagements at the at mid boiler. Or you can be in position to trade her out, you can be in position to double peek with her, or you can be in position to pick up her gun if she were to die. Now you have the marshal, the marshal lives on, continues to be useful for your team, etc. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I described the, a, a couple of plays where, where things come down to awareness, position, and timing. Where, like, let's see if I can find that round. Somewhere on an A attack. Maybe this one? I think, it's oh, on. I'm, I'm, I think I'm still seeing your notepad. Oh, sorry. Let me, um, let me change back to VLC. Okay, now it's good. <clears throat> okay, so is this one here, I think. When is the shooting yeah. timing? Where awareness is like, oh, my team is playing aggressive, I also want to play aggressive. My team is pushing in, she, my, my Rainer has created all this space for me, I can push it through, or I can also get orb, right? 
Then uh, later on, where uh, I think this sage kills everyone. Yeah, the sage kills a bunch of people. At this point right here, this is like uh, a, clue, uh, a perfect example of like a, of where awareness, positioning, and timing all come together. Where like you need to be aware of like what's happening around you. All oh, this vase is fighting the sage. Then immediately you think, oh, I need, I need to help. I need to help my vase, or I need to trade out the sage. I need to punch it for. Or peeking so aggressively at, at our vase, like the, our sage is fully exposed to maze. So we should think, oh, I want to, I want to get to to peek screens as fast as possible, and then the position to do that is maze. And then the third is timing, where I want this to happen as fast as possible. So timing is key. I don't want to take yeah. so long that the sage is already dead and the the fight's already been decided, or I take so long that my vase dies and then the sage like escapes back to screens or something. Or she escapes back to, back to safety, right? So this, this is essentially like here's one opportunity you could have killed the sage. Then you have another opportunity here you could have killed the sage because she's spraying all her bullets. And then although more difficult, you have a third opportunity because your sage, the, the enemy sage, is still focused on or or was still still focused, still looking at your rays, that you have a, a third very tiny slim window of opportunity. To isolate a one with the, with the sage, while hopefully yeah. ignoring the the rays. So, going back to uh, uh, go? go back to the notes. That all things, all all plays, all decisions boil down to awareness, positioning, timing. Being aware of what's happening around you, trying to predict what is about to happen based on this awareness, this information you've gathered and positioning in such a way that uh, that you take advantage of this play or in the timing to execute this play. Okay. And then let's go to another example where I think you were on defense, so not fracture. And uh, actually, let me switch again, Maybe you'll see. It's like some time where you had a marshal. Here we have a marshal. Okay, it's in here. We have a specter. Here we have an op. Okay, here we have a marshal. It's in here. Okay. So, awareness is not just things that you see directly in front of you, right? So, here, like, we see someone fall. But awareness is like. The sound cues and the mini map, where like one, the mini map shows that the the Reina has spent one leer. Actually, that's that's another key thing too is that she has spent one leer already, and it's it's in the middle of a site. So that also gives you an idea of where the Reina is. And based on the map again, we see the sage, we see the omen, we see the jet. It's all four all four players. Only fifth person who's unknown is uh Reina. actually Reina. Reina's on site. Yeah. He's, he's uh, right behind the stage. I don't know all five players are. And now the the Reina has spent her second leer. So even if your your mono is off at this point, you can basically go off of just like just sound cues at this point. Where like okay, a leer happens to our right. A dismiss happens to our right. A sage wall goes to happens to our left. And an open omen CP goes off to our left, right? This is all part of, part of awareness of like what is happening around me and that can feed you information to help give you an idea of like what play should I make, what should I do, where should I go, what should I look at. Okay. So yeah, to re reiterate the situation based on all those, all those um, awareness details, all this information that we've collected in the past uh, I don't know, like 20 seconds, we can mm -hmm. either decide to push this arena because uh, we'll, we'll, let's go back, rewind a bit, and we'll predict that this Reina is going to push into us, and this Reina is isolated, so this would be a pretty good fight to take because it's an isolated one we won. The other option is that, or the other prediction is that this Omen is going to push behind us because the Omen has TP'd presumably onto rafters. Yeah. So either we push the Omen, which has the, the slight risk that uh, we expose ourselves to the rest of sites. 
or we push the rhino we just play a safer bet because we can push we can push this rhino without peeking the rest of sight and we can push this rhino without having to worry about this rhino leering around this corner most likely this rhino is going to wide swing because she yeah. doesn't have a leer So, based on all the information we've collected, we've made a prediction that these two players are going to push us, and we realize that this Vayner is alone. So, if we make, we decide that the play is to take the one with one we want with the Vayner, then the position you want to be in is that we want to go push down these stairs into the Vayner so that we can take this fight early before this Omen gets behind us. Okay. And that's where the timing comes in, where we want to make this make this play happen as fast as possible we want to get down these stairs fight this reina kill the reina then turn the corner or then turn around and face up top of the stairs to be ready for that omen to swing out mm -hmm. right so yeah yeah awareness positioning timing everything is based off of that that's how you make good decisions that's how you figure out what what do you want to do what's about to happen etc okay so back to the notes last thing um you should uh, play aggressive when your team is playing aggressive and play fast when your team is in a gunfight. So if you try to like stick mm -hmm. to this general uh, rule of thumb of, of matching your team's aggression, then a lot of things are going to like fall into place. Especially on attack. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Oh, no questions. All right. So if you have nothing else, uh, I'll stop here. If you uh, have any questions in the future, feel to ask. Or if you have any more reviews that you want to do, feel free to ask. I think, yeah, this is awesome, actually. I mean, there's a lot of things that I missed out when I was playing, uh, which, which were uh, more clear in this review. So. It's actually really cool. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so a very complicated game. Is a lot of people think it's mm -hmm. it's mostly aim, but it's really aim is when you have to battle. Like all they have to battle is is thinking constantly, thinking about what to do, what's happening, and collecting information, collecting data, etc. True. Yeah. Really true. So I guess, uh, yeah. All right. Can I end, uh, end this, right? Yep. All right. Sounds good. All right. So, See you thank later. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for your time.